Hey guys, Windsor here, and this is an episode of the Groove Guru podcast, and a number of my students have asked me, perhaps the number one question for aspiring students with music, uh, drumming, or whatever they want to do, who really want to become professional in their endeavours, and that is, you know, how do you get that first opportunity? How do you get your foot in the door, so to speak? And one of the best responses I have to that is from personal experience, because I don't like to just hypothesize and coach people around things that are not in my experience. And I want to talk about how I got my first you could say made your foot in the door musically, so to speak. And that was and is continuing to play with Hugh Cornwell. And for those of you that may not know, Hugh Cornwell uh, originally was the frontman singer guitarist for a band called The Stranglers, who originated from the punk rock era. And the Stranglers were a very successful band through the 70s, 80s, 90s. And Hugh Cornwell, you know, partied with the band in the 90s and continues to work and create as a prolific songwriter. And I play with Hugh Cornwell these days. And my response to people who ask, how do you get your foot in the door? One of the most effective and authentic I've found is how I got the gig with Hugh. So here we go. So I was a student in Scotland. I did pretty well with my academic studies, lots of A's, etc. at uh, high school. And I went to uh, University of Strathclyde to study law, uh, marketing, human resources, etc. Um, wasn't a path that resonated with me at the time. Uh, my real passion at the time was playing music and drumming and to cut a long story short I went to the Academy of Contemporary Music in Guildford in Surrey and I studied drums there and at the time I had in Scotland some great teachers there was a great local teacher named Mick Coyle with much respect great musician teacher human being uh, Ted McKenna who had worked with Fish, Michael Schenker, the Alex Harvey Band, and more great artists. And I had a good grounding in a lot of drumming and music. And I went to the Academy of Contemporary Music to further my musical endeavours. And it was a lot of fun. And when I was there, I was just focused on being all that I could be in expressing my outputs musically. Uh, I was actually asked to teach my class. I was asked to deliver a lecture on drummer Vinnie Colley Utah when I was there. Uh, one of my great inspirations, incredible musician for sure. And I graduated at the end of that year with the award of Outstanding Student, which, well, I'm very grateful for. And when I was a student there, there was an artist known as well, Hugh Cornwell came to the academy to uh, give a lecture based on his experience. He was talking about songwriting and how he created a lot of his iconic songs. And I was like, wow, this is a really cool guy. Very interesting. And I didn't know much about Hugh at the time. And I since looked into his catalogue and I was like, wow, great, amazing artist. And when I graduated from the academy, a few months later, I got a phone call from someone I, I know who worked at the academy saying, Windsor, um, we have, uh, someone has contacted us. Uh, there's, there's an artist you may be aware of, Hugh Cornwell. He came to give a, a lecture at the academy when you were a student there. Do you remember that? Yep. And they said, and it was uh, a man named Ian Edwards, a uh, very cool fellow. He says, oh, Hugh's looking for a drummer. And he called us to see if you'd be interested in playing with him. And I was like, wow, yeah. And as some context, when Hugh was giving the lecture at the academy when I was a student, unbeknownst to me at the time, after his lecture, he was given a tour saying, 
that he was shown around and it was told this is the new Rodborough building at the academy, uh, this is our new drum room, we have all these new facilities and blah 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 and he was like okay yeah okay fine, Um, is anyone any good there? Um, And in relation to the drum cohort which I was part of at the time, uh, I was pointed out as that guy. <laughs> He's awesome. If you ever want a drummer, that's the guy that you want. I, I didn't know that at the time. And about a year later, or a few months later after I graduated, Hugh actually was in the position of needing a drummer. And he called the academy, and as I said, the academy called me and said, would you like to, are you interested in playing with Hugh? And I was like, yeah, of course. Okay, here's his number, blah, blah, blah. So I, I got Hugh's number, and I was like, okay, um, let's give this number a call. <laughs> So I called the number and I was like, ring, 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 ring. Hello, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? I said, hi, um, is this Hugh speaking? He says, yeah, who's this? I said, hi, my name's Windsor. Uh, I was a student at the academy. Oh, yeah, 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 Hugh said. Yeah, you come highly recommended. I'm looking for a drummer that can play like Mitch Mitchell. I have a, a band that is a, my vision is that it is a power trio, like the Jimi Hendrix experience. I want someone that can play like Jimi Hendrix's drummer, Mitch Mitchell, blah, 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 blah. Would you be interested? And on that call, it came over me. It just says, I am Mitch Mitchell. Now, I'll go into that a little bit later. Because when you say the words, I am, that's a statement of being that's very powerful. And whatever you follow the words with in your, your life, I am, that shows up. And to cut a long story short, it's, it was like, I said, I am. I am that guy. And he was like, okay. And the way it worked out is we got together for a rehearsal audition. He sent me some songs. I learned them. And he was like, oh, wow, cool. You can play. This is cool. Let's, let's do this. And I worked with Hugh for a few years. I uh, recorded a few albums with him. I recorded one of my first records. Uh, the the first record as a professional musician it was Beyond Elysian Fields in New Orleans and I played with you for a few years we recorded a triple live album I had a few years off and then I came back and we did a tour with John Cooper Clark and then we played with Wilco Johnson many shows with the undertones etc blah, 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 blah. and it that relationship continues and Aside from this just being a, oh, look at me, I play with fill in the blank, how do you get that first opportunity as a musician, creative, professional, if that's something that you want to do? Well, a few points. First of all, knowing that you have what it takes to be able to deliver. Okay, that that, that is a key, and I, I will come back to that. But I've got three points that I want to share with you here and the first one is be visible you can be the best at what you do at home in your room if you're a drummer a guitar player a singer you could be absolutely amazing at what you do though if no one knows that you exist then the chances are no one's going to give you a call so you have to be visible now, we live in an age where we have the ability and the opportunity to put ourselves out and our creative output via the internet and network with people socially via social media. And it has its positives, absolutely. And that key is you have to be visible. There's a saying that the best kept secret in marketing is you. You know, again, you may get a call out of the blue and you may not have to put yourself out there, though that is, it's not guaranteed. So all of the things that you can do to set yourself up to win, that's my recommendation. So number one is be visible. And the second thing is show your work. Like when you're on social media, yeah, we're all on social media these days and it is what it is. And many people are just, you know, talking about, okay, this is what I had for lunch, blah, 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 blah. If you want to show yourself as a professional, doing what you do, showing your work, that's the key that I want to share here. If you get a recommendation, say you're looking for someone that you want to install a 
a new kitchen in your house or you want to build an extension to your house and someone recommends someone to you okay oh here's joe blogs he's amazing at doing that pretty much the first thing we're going to do is say, okay great thank you very much i shall check that guy out and where's the first place we look it's often social media so showing your work is key so the work that you do the creative output that you have you know it's free create a social media page showing your work okay if you are a beginner professional in whatever field it is when you do something you can show that there and you the more you create creative output and the more you add to your profile you build a portfolio of your work so you know you're being visible and you are showing your work that is key the third point is you know be the one that gets the work that you want okay going back to the story when i was asked to play with you he says i'm looking for someone that drums like mitch mitchell blah 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 i says well it came over me in the call i said i am mitch mitchell i am that guy and you know i'm you know again be careful about the words that you say you know I, i'm not going to say i am you know mitch mitchell you know he's unique to he played with Jimi hendrix etc and that is what it is and there's various things about his personality that's 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 positive and that are negative though having a clear identity that you can refer to on a daily basis consistently is very very powerful so who is the person that you want to be and you know what is your outcome it could be to be i am a successful musician that plays with the best bands artists all throughout the world and i have a sustainable career doing that making great money being at the top of my game so who do you need to be to create that so you can create an empowering identity statement i am boom. i am an awesome musician that plays with great bands artists internationally and i earn great money doing that that's fantastic so it's it's about being the person you need to be to create the results that you want okay now having that identity is powerful because even if you're not that person being yet and again i'll always say yet because whatever you want to do that you work towards if you can't do it at first that doesn't mean that you can't do it that just means that you can't do it yet and the bottom line is that you can c-a-n can do it having the direction in mind is absolutely key okay whatever you imagine you can be do or have you can create that and yes it takes action consistent repetitive action to create what you want if you want a toned muscular sexy physique okay like mine okay now whatever um the point is if you want to build the muscles you have to lift the weights you have to take the action okay so a lot of the time it does start with that self-concept you have a vision of how you want to be and you say okay that's how i want to be that's the person i want to be then it's reverse engineering what do i have to do to create that yeah when you first envision that self you want to be you don't immediately have the how as evident but when you have that that outcome the way you want to be the how will show up via your mind because that's the way that your mind works reticular activating system it's like show me all the things in this room that are a book boom i look at my bookshelf show me all the things that are a glass of water i look at this glass of water okay and it's the same thing show me all the things that are in line with the identity that i want to create an experience so it is an inner game so who is the version of you that you want to be and my invitation is affirming that daily regularly and the how will present itself you can sit and figure it out yes and it can just come to you also the key is affirm to you the version of yourself that you want to be and that is the way that you create the opportunities to have the gigs and the work possibilities that you want 
okay? So again, three keys, whatever you want to create. One, you know, be visible. If you're the best at what you do in your room and no one sees you, then no one is going to be likely to call you. It can happen, yes. But again, it's about let's increase the possibilities for you to create what you want. So be visible. Show your work. The things that you're working on creatively, your musical skills, your uh, your public speaking skills, whatever that may be. If you're a freelance professional in whatever field, say you create kitchens for a person, say you uh, write articles for people, you know, have a, some kind of portfolio and social media is great for this that you can show your work and be the one who creates the work and the opportunities that you want which starts with having a vision for that, okay? And all of the things that don't align with your vision, cut them out. For example, if you want to be a high energy person, a great inventory you can do is say, okay, what are all the things that I do that cultivate my energy being high and me being optimistic and me being positive, like listening to positive audios, reading books that inspire and uplift, you know, being around positive, optimistic people, etc. And what are the things that drain me? You know, what are the foods that if I eat, you know, if I eat 10 pizzas in a day, that gives me a big slump. It's like, you can do without that. You know, who are the people that don't support me in my dreams? It's like those people, it's like you don't need those people in your life. Okay, so energizers, drainers. Be clear about that and get rid of all the things that don't support you. If you want to live your best life, winners hang around winners. So to round this up, you are someone that has the absolute potential of being a winner like never before in your life. And if you want to get the opportunities that set you up to win, it is absolutely possible. If I can do it and get gigs playing with well-known artists around the globe, like Hugh Cornwell, The Stranglers, Wishbone Ash, Fish, John Cooper Clark, etc. You can absolutely do it too. And it's all about taking those simple steps, being able to put yourself out there and have the confidence to do it. And even if you don't feel confidence, and this is a great point, you know, I need to feel confident to put myself out there. It's like, well, no, you don't. <laughs> it's like, do you have to have confidence to make a cup of tea? Do you have confidence to make your dinner? No. <laughs> you may try a new recipe uh, once and it may or may not turn out great first time. And the more you practice it and the more feedback you get from your actions, the more you say, oh, oh actually, I can make it better by doing that. And the more that you prove to yourself that you can create amazing results, the more your confidence grows. So confidence is a byproduct by putting yourself out there and taking the action. And you absolutely can do it. So it really is all about action. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, manifesting and the secret, etc. And, you know, there's a lot to be said about mindset because one thing I share in a lot of my work with, a lot of the people that I teach with music, drumming, and also coaching is that our inner world always precedes our outer world because when we change our inner world that changes the way that we see reality and that influences our actions and when we have an inner game that is positive and empowering that leads us to take action when you have a mindset that's negative that's often the thing that stops you taking action and it really is all about taking action and moving forward in the direction that it is that you want to create and ultimately experience in your life. So how do you get that first opportunity? By showing up the best you can possibly be. Okay. And it's a constant process when you get the first gig, the first opportunity and you turn up and you do great work. Fantastic. Then it's all about, you know, how do you continue to show up? And I think it was Woody Allen that said, you know, success is 90% you know, or whatever it was in his quote, showing up. You know, success is 90% showing up. Show up. Do the work. Be the person. You know, be the person that's great to get along with. Be the person that's nice, that's kind, that's, that's true, in line with your truth. And 
ultimately is excellent at what they do. Because, you know, if you think about it, who is the person that you want to hire? Who or what is the thing you want to buy off of Amazon? Say you want to buy a new pair of headphones. If you're anyone like me, I'm a bit of a headphone audiophile guy. I will look at the options available and choose the ones that are best reviewed. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So continue to work on yourself. Be visible. Show your work. And be the person worthy of the results. You know, and even if you're not ready yet, like for example, when I got the call with Hugh Cornwell, was I ready to the the very next day show up and actually play a concert? No, because I had to do the work. I had to listen to the repertoire. I had to, you know, check out all the songs and work out the structure of the songs and figure that out, clarify that in my mind, practice it, etc. But just knowing that you can really can take you so much further than believing that you can't. So really, success is an inside game. Inner world precedes outer world. If I can do it, you can do it. If the people that you admire have created the success that you would like to experience, again, remember, they are made of the same stuff as you are. Okay? Do the work, trust the process, and you can create the results and the gigs and get your foot in the door in the way that you want to.